Welcome to worship. I am Pastor Ed Myers, the pastor here at Celebration Lutheran Church, and we are celebrating the fourth weekend of Easter because one weekend is not enough. So this is the fourth season, the fourth weekend, I mean, of the Easter season or Easter tide, and I'm just glad that we have this chance to praise God together. Today, we're going to continue then in the fourth part of our series, and then what happens for the disciples after the resurrection? What does the early church look like? How do they stay faithful to the mission that God has laid out? So our sermon series, and then today, we go with Paul and Silas and to Thessalonica in Acts chapter 17, and we're going to look at what they went through and trying to get a community of believers um, off the ground there in Thessalonica. And so we're going to dive deeper into that. But let me just encourage you in this worship. I know digital, you know, on-demand streaming worship is new to many of you. Pour your heart into it, right? When there are songs, we put the words up there, sing along. When there are prayers and there are parts for you, pray along. Just pour your whole heart into worship as we praise God who saves us from death, who gives us everlasting life, who loves us each and every day. What an amazing time to be together as church, even when we're apart, to be the church in the world. And I hope you feel that excitement uh, today as we come together to praise the Lord. One quick announcement. We have added three blood drives for the month of May. Our community here in Middle Tennessee is still running low on blood. So the Red Cross reached out to us. And so we have blood drives in our fellowship hall. Um, You have to make an appointment for that, but it'll be May 5th, May 12th and May 21st, and you can go to redcross.org and find uh, through their donate tab um, ways to donate blood. And, um, they will have slots there and what times are available for those. So as you are able, please, our community needs it. It's one of the ways we can continue to serve in this time of social distancing. With that being said, though, what a great chance to be together. Pour your heart into worship. Let's do this. Let's worship. I'm trading my sorrow I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure. And his joy is going to be my strength Though the sorrow may last for the night The joy comes in the morning I'm trading my sorrow I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord And we say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, Lord, amen I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure, and His joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes in the morning. I'm 
trading my sorrow Cause I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness well, I'm trading my pain well, I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord For the joy of the Lord For the joy of the Lord Amen Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We gather in the name of the risen Lord. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We gather as sisters and brothers of the resurrected one. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We gather to share our faith and to worship God. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We gather to proclaim the good news of Easter. Christ is risen. Alleluia. God of the resurrection, we gather this morning as a community of believers. We come with joy to greet one another and to tell again and again the amazing news. Christ is risen. Love is victorious over death. You have given us new life in the name of your Son. May our singing, praying, listening, and proclaiming be a testimony to the power of your love to make us a new creation as a community of faith. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. There's no space that His love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to an amazing grace. Take me in with your arms spread wide Take me in like an orphan child Never let go, never leave my side I am holding on to you I am holding on to you In the middle of the storm I am holding on, I am Love like this, oh my God, to find I am overwhelmed with a joy divine Love like this sets our hearts on fire I am holding on to you I am Holding on to you In the middle of the storm I am holding on I am I am Holding on to you I am Holding on to you In the middle of the storm I am holding on I am This is my resurrection song This is my hallelujah come This is why it's to you I run This is my resurrection song This is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you I run There's no space that His love can reach There's no place where we can't find peace There's no end to amazing grace And I am holding on to you I am Holding on to you In the middle of the storm I am holding on I am Holding on to you I am 
holding on to you in the middle of the storm i am holding on i am holding on to you i am holding on to you in the middle of the storm i am holding on i am i am We pray together the prayer of the day. Messiah, Jesus, your followers established churches in communities near and far. Take us outside of ourselves and teach us to give away what you have given to us. Show us how to witness to your presence in places near and far. Amen. Today's holy reading comes from Acts chapter 17. Paul and Silas journeyed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, then came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was Paul's custom, he entered the synagogue and for three Sabbaths interacted with them on the basis of the scriptures. Through his interpretation of the scriptures, he demonstrated that Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. He declared, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. Some were convinced and joined Paul and Silas, including a larger number of Greek god worshippers and quite a few prominent women. But the Jews became jealous and brought along some thugs who were hanging out in the marketplace. They formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They attacked Jason's house, intending to bring Paul and Silas before the people. When they didn't find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city officials. They were shouting, These people who have been disturbing the peace throughout the empire have also come here. What is more, Jason has welcomed them into his home. Every one of them does what is contrary to Caesar's decrees by naming someone else as king, Jesus. This provoked the crowd and the city officials even more. After Jason and the others posted bail, they released them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second holy reading comes from 1 Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Thessalonians' church that is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to all of you. We always thank God for all of you when we mention you constantly in our prayers. This is because we remember your work that comes from faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and we know that he has chosen you. We know this because our good news didn't come to you just in speech, but also with power and the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. You know as well as we do what kind of people we were when we were with you, which was for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord when you accepted the message that came from the Holy Spirit with joy in spite of great suffering. As a result, you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The message about the Lord rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place. The news about your faithfulness to God has spread so that we don't even need to mention it. People tell us about what sort of welcome we had from you and how you turned to God from idols. As a result, you are serving the living and true God, and you are waiting for His Son from heaven. His Son is Jesus, who was the one He raised from the dead, and who is the one who will rescue us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, or good evening, depending on whenever you're watching this. Maybe good afternoon. I don't know. I'm just glad that we get this chance and this time to be together. I want to tell you today a little something I wanted to share with you. I didn't bring it with me. I meant to, but it was one of my favorite children's books. I don't have it anymore, but you might have it. It's called Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible. No good, very bad day. And it's about exactly what it sounds like in that title, right? It's about a boy named Alexander having the worst day of his life. He wakes up with gum in his hair. He's got lima beans for dinner. He's watching TV with his family. And then there's kissing on TV. Ew, right? All of that stuff. But I always like that book, not only because... You know, Alexander was having a bad day, and it's kind of funny, you know, just how much happens to him. But I like that book because we can all identify. We all understand. We all have just bad days. 
right? Where nothing seems to go right. Everything seems to go wrong. Well, I want to tell you, when you have one of those days, God still loves you. Even when you're having a bad day, God still loves you. And God's here to be with you in the bad days. See, the favorite thing, my, one of my favorite things about God is that God doesn't just like me when I'm having a good day or only want to hear about the good times in my life. Right? The Bible tells us, like, God is a friend, and your truest and bestest friends are there for you, especially when you're having a bad day. I just want you to think about that and remember, if you're ever having a really bad day, Maybe just take a moment and realize, you know, I'm still okay because God still loves me. Even on my terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. What a beautiful lesson. That, yeah, hard days and bad days, they happen. They happen to all of us. But even then, and sometimes I think especially then, it's important to know that God loves you. Let us pray. Awesome God, amazing Lord. Sometimes we have bad days and you're ready to hear about it. We can pray and we can come to you and just tell you about how bad our day was. And you're always there to listen to us. Thank you for loving us, especially on those bad days, on the difficult days or hard days when nothing seems to go right. Thank you for loving us all the time, everywhere, every place. Amen. And then, today is, and then we're on part four of this sermon series, and then the struggle. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be encountered, your grace and forgiveness experienced, and that your love would be made known to us and through us. Into the great unknown. Think of the great explorers that we study in, in history class. Now, many of them did terrible things. But can you imagine just setting sail on a ship or just waking up one day and saying, we're going to go that way. And we don't know if anybody has ever mapped or chartered or ever been in this place before. Amazing. But going into the unknown, there's also something, right? You have to have that sense of adventure, but there is also something scary about that. Into the unknown. Since we've been able to spend some more time together as, as family with all the stay-at-home orders, it made me think back to the days when my wife and I first got married. And even just before that, when I asked my wife to marry me, I had to ask her to join the adventure into the unknown. I had just started seminary, and I knew God's call on my life. I didn't know where it was going to take me, but I had already signed up for that adventure. And we started dating. And then when we started talking marriage, one of the hardest parts for me in asking her to marry me was to look at her and be able to say, I want to marry you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I hope you want to be with me, but I cannot promise you where that will take us. And saying this to a girl whose family had lived in Middle Tennessee for generations. And to look at her and say, we may never live in Middle Tennessee again once we're married. You see, we got married. We went on internship. We then had another year of seminary, and about 20 months after we were married, we moved to our first call in Frankfort, Kentucky. And what an adventure, right? Think about that. Moving is hard enough. Moving three times in those first 20 months that we were married and not knowing. The first two, at least we knew where we were going when we got married. But after that, we had no idea. And talk about being pulled out of your comfort zone. God calls us, and it's not just pastors, God calls us out of our comfort zone. Many of you weren't born and raised here in Middle Tennessee, but God's call on your life through your vocation, through your career, or through marriage has brought you here. Think about that. What an amazing, wonderful, crazy adventure. 
right? We've all experienced sometimes that reality of moving into the unknown, like moving into a new school. Or I remember going from you know middle school to high school and just seeing that jump there or from elementary school to junior, junior high school or from high school into college. It's always a step. You kind of have some ideas of what you might expect, but there is a whole lot that you don't know and you know that you don't know. And there's no way to know. So moving into that unknown, and that's really scary because the unknown scares us because we don't have control of the unknown. You can't control what you don't know. You can't control most of what you do know, much less control the things that you don't know. And here's where it becomes an issue of faith. And here's where we meet the Bible today. We jump into the Bible today with Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 17. Last week, we left off in chapter 3. So we have jumped a long ways. We've even brought the Apostle Paul on board. He wasn't part of the story quite yet um, there in chapter 3. So we bring the Apostle Paul on board, and he is now the traveling missionary, and he is one of the most known, well-known figures in the Bible. But by the time we get to chapter 17, think about this, just 14 chapters, right, of the whole Bible. We are now two-thirds of the way from Genesis through the Bible, and we get introduced to Paul. And 14 chapters later, here's what it says at the top of Acts chapter 17 in my Bible, right? There's a heading for this section, sort of a title for this section, and it says, More Trouble for Paul. As if going into the unknown wasn't scary enough. The one thing I can promise you and assure you is that moving into the unknown, especially the unknown in the future, wherever God calls us, will not be struggle free. It will not all be a bed of roses. It will not be all puppy pictures and cat memes. It just won't. And if you have lived long enough, you know that the difficulties in life will show up, whether it's the car breaking down at the most inopportune time, right, or just tragedy striking just unexpectedly. Life is hard. Life is difficult. And being a follower of Jesus Christ does not change that. It does not change that. That's even in Paul's message, right? We pick up Acts chapter 17. Paul is traveling into Thessalonica. And he goes to the synagogue in Thessalonica with Silas, and he begins to tell them about the Old Testament. They know, right? He's in the synagogue, and he highlights those parts of Scripture where it says the Messiah will suffer. See, most people didn't have that expectation of the Messiah. They liked the Messiah that was going to ride in on the white horse and, and rule and make things like they were in the golden days of Israel under King David. But God has something even much bigger in mind. And anytime something new comes into being, it's a struggle, right? I think of when my kids were born. Anytime something new comes into being, it is a struggle. So Paul tells these folks in Thessalonica, look at the Old Testament. See how the Messiah had to suffer? Now let me tell you this. Jesus is that Messiah. He suffered, he died, and he rose. And many people, especially those Greeks who weren't quite full Jewish converts, right? Those Greeks especially tended to believe him and learn. And now we learn that one of them was named Jason. And here's what I mean about the struggle and the unknown and following God on this great adventure does not mean it will be struggle free. They come to Jason's house because Jason is the nice guy that housed Paul, gave Paul and and Silas a place to stay. So when the angry mob comes looking for Paul and Silas, they come to Jason's house. And that's one of those that always stands out and cracks me up. First time I was really reading through the entire Bible and coming across the name Jason. It was just not a name I expected to find in the Bible. But Jason stands up to it. He gets arrested, but they make bail. But the struggle is very, very real for Paul, for Silas, for those first Christians in Thessalonica. In fact, when Paul then writes, and that was our other lesson today, he commends that community for persevering through the struggle. 
He commends them for persevering through the struggles of those early days. He doesn't whitewash it or say the struggles are going to completely go away. He continues to encourage them as a pastor would. He continues to say he's praying for them. He continues to lift them up. He encourages them to continue to grow in their faith. Wow. Here's my takeaway, though, from all of this. When I'm thinking about if you are too comfortable in your faith, you're not really living. it. I know that sounds harsh, right? God gives us all times of rest and times of comfort when we need it. But if you have been comfortable in your faith for a long time, I'm not sure you're listening to where God's leading. Because over and over again, when we read scripture, we see the struggle. Was it a struggle for Mother Teresa? Was it a struggle for Martin Luther? Was it a struggle for Dietrich Bonhoeffer? Was it a struggle for Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Was it a struggle for all of these that we look at as heroes of the faith? Yes. Was it the greatest adventure and the fullest life ever known? Yes. So I told you my takeaways, right? That when God calls us beyond our comfort zone, when God calls us right into the struggle, like during times of a global pandemic, when God calls us out of the nest, we learn when Paul went to Thessalonica, God was already there. While Paul was in Thessalonica and the mobs were getting angry, God was with him. God was with Silas. God was with Jason. God was with them. And the promise that we find from Paul throughout it all in his writings is that God was with him through it all and even after all of it. And that's the beauty and the truth of the gospel message is a God who does not take away our struggles, who does not take away our pain. Right, because you would have to take away free will. You would have to take away love to take away pain. That God does not take any of that away. But not only knows what it is to struggle, as Jesus did on the cross, but struggles with us and walks with us in those hardest of times, in those most difficult days, and beyond, into the unknown. When I was in college, a song came out on Christian radio called The Great Adventure by Stephen Curtis Chapman. And one of the lines that always stuck with me from that um, says, this is the greatest journey, right? It's called The Great Adventure. This is the greatest journey that the human heart will ever see. The love of God will take us far beyond our wildest dreams. I wonder when Paul was a Pharisee, at the stoning of Stephen, right, earlier in Acts and making sure that he was stoned just right and running the show for that. In his wildest dreams, did he ever dream he would be in Thessalonica preaching, forming a community on behalf of Jesus Christ? I doubt it. But what a great adventure. What an amazing place to be beyond our wildest dreams. So as we struggle through this together, as we've struggled through tornadoes, as we struggle through pandemic, yes, let's admit that struggle is real. And we'd rather not have to do that. But here's what the gospel promises us in Jesus Christ. That God was here before tornadoes and pandemics. God is with us through tornadoes and pandemics. And God will be with us after tornadoes and pandemics. And living this life following Jesus Christ is always the fullest life and the greatest adventure because we do it together and we do it with God. This great adventure. The struggle is real, but the adventure is amazing because God is amazing. And then Jesus came and died on the cross. And then Jesus was raised from the dead. And then he handed the disciples the mission as he ascended into heaven. And then they handed that to the apostles and disciples that came after them. And then 
Those folks handed it on to us. And now that mission is ours. And the struggle in this mission we learned from Paul is real. But there's no better place to be than on this great adventure with God. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper spots And melt a heart of stone Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. O God, in the light of the resurrection, we come before you to pray for the needs of others and for your world. Lord, we lift up to you all who are struggling with illness, with despair over their lives, or with the breakdown of relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring those places in our world where war, violence, poverty, and need are the experiences of everyday life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring the headline news of this weekend. We hold in our hearts the pain of those suffering violence, bereavement, or conflict. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring ourselves, the private struggles, the heart's yearnings, the hidden dreams, the unfulfilled potential. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, O Lord, grant us by your grace. In the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough, heaven's reaching down to us. Your grace is enough for me. Please join me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus, provide us with every good thing we need, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Go in peace as witnesses of our risen Lord.
Thanks be to God.